Hello everyone, today's episode of Team Area Combos is here. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about various topics, and for, as Marvel vs. Capcom 4 rumors are coming about, we're going to talk about a couple of various tournaments that happen right there in the old school scene of fighting games. Uh, we're going to talk about Smash Ultimate and Muff 1 right there review, of what uh, pro players are like, uh, thinking about the game at the moment, what characters are good right there, then we're going to talk about uh, something a little bit different, which is talking about an anime called High Score Girl related to fighting games, and we're going to talk about a couple other various fighting game news right there and such like that later on. So, um, let's uh, get right into it. We're going to talk about uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 4 rumors. Uh, basically, there's a couple of rumors or speculation going around right now that uh, that then we might get a Marvel vs. Capcom 4 reveal or something like that in in April. One is a kind of like a kind of hint right there. People are more expecting that it's just related to um, a, a new uh, Fantastic Four announcement right there related to the games. Which is that uh, the Mar the Marvel Games Twitter, which is basically the first Marvel Games Twitter account that basically uh, announces various Marvel franchise uh, games like like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which got announced like a, 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 while back, a little while back. Last uh, month, yeah. Yeah, last month or so. That basically is uh, announcing oh, or that they changed the logo to uh, basically having Marvel Games there. They changed the A in Marvel to a 4. Which I would say right there, we're thinking that it could be something related to Marvel because of that. Even though that obviously it's a very low chance to do it right there. But there is another rumor like, uh, spreading around from a known source that he said that it's coming heard around the like, rumor mill right now. Which is a YouTuber, which is a French YouTuber called Terry Beauregard, that basically uh, a while back, back in like 2015 right there, uh, basically leaked uh, some known so things for Street Fighter V before it was announced. Because I believe he leaked the last seed. He he would lead, uh, lead um, that V trigger system in the game and a couple and other teams, Mika like, as well. and R Mika as, as well. That he so he has legitimate real possibilities of being a real legit like like he has a real source in this. So basically, he has a legitimate claim of actually saying something like that, where he, uh, in a YouTube video, says that there's leaks going on right now that um, there is a possibility of a Marvel vs. Capcom 4 announced but sometime in April. He said this, said it in a YouTube video that, um, like, a back, back in, um, back in December, that he, uh, like, like, he uh, was talking about that it's on fence. But I was able to use Google Translate into that, which I'm going to try to copy and paste the freaking text right here, so hopefully you can see it properly in this. Okay. okay. Well, like, you know, in the video, in the video screen right here. Basically, mm -hmm. this is all the French context right here that I got from the video right here. And you can, I can show you the context. So this is the same text right in the video, so I am not trying to bullshit. Uh, people here here basically this is what's starting on right here this is all he says us man all day is plenty of questions that we're trying to ask ourselves and then around here that um let's see really a mobile phone comes out exactly exact example at some point people who told me it's not spaz or no name of the spell the exit which obviously that's you know this is a google translate right there so obviously the translation is going to be off of it because you know it's google translate but basically, he's saying that right here, there's a possibility of a Marvel 4 thing coming sometime in April for people who told me that it's like it could be right there. But obviously, right there, it's not an exact translation right here. But um, let me see if we can try to bring up the video too, real quick, so I can show you the things real quick. So, mm -hmm. where's the link to the video? Uh, uh, I'm trying to like, find it in the YouTube thing right here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let me uh, let me load her up real quick. Uh, okay. Skip. Yeah, it means that apparently there's really. Okay, so let's you know there's an open transcript thing right here on on the YouTube right here. This shows that this right here is the same text as that. So. So here, okay, 946 right here, that's the text right there. 
and then go down right there 946 same text right there so it's the same text that okay. is coming up right here so here's the text right there that he uh, said right here moi un marvel 4 qui sort euh ah moi aussi j'ai entendu euh j'ai entendu exactement la même chose yeah and the same text is right here boy he said it officer right there is still in french so it's hard to hard to make that sir right there so we need someone to actually can translate french properly to actually tell what it is so uh um, did you did you sell it yet oh like oh the video right there i uh, i was so showing the people like for it right there so um oh, okay <laughs> so there's a youtube video um the, there's a youtube video there and then obviously the translated text right here uh i can show you how to actually like show up the transcript too real quick so you know mm-hmm okay okay looks like yeah, I can yeah guys yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys, okay. what do you think about this, like, rumor at the moment? Well, I think it's I think it's definitely for um, Marvel 4, bro. Marvel, Marvel vs. Capcom 4? Definitely. That's way too big of a hint. Everybody's been dying for a Marvel vs. Capcom 4, like a real Marvel vs. Capcom 4. And this is a big, like, telltale sign, like... I never thought it was gonna happen, but I think it's gonna happen now. Like now, I'm a now I'm a I'm way more hopeful than ever because this is way more than we got for Marvel Infinite. Marvel Infinite just came out of seemingly nowhere, but now they're kind of teasing the fans. I I it could either be two one of two things. They could either be changing it for Marvel vs. Capcom Four, or it might be for Avengers Four. Like, but at, at the same time, that doesn't really make sense because that's a movie and this is Marvel games. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is related to Marvel in terms of games is Marvel versus Capcom. Okay. And also Fantastic Four as well. They should okay. like posted some like news about okay. that on their okay. Twitter. Uh, guys, I actually I just found some very interesting information like on Twitter right here. Uh, it's from the guy that, uh, it's actually from the guy that actually originally started the, the rumor post and then also Terry Bowe got actually replied to him. So I just posted the mm -hmm. thing right here. Basically, uh, this is this is a Twitter thread right here asking for asking for that. Like Ken Bogard basically said that, uh, like the guy who like Wizard started this, so it was Ken Bogard, says that like there's going to be a, a Marvel game in development, everything like that, and then he replied, never said that. I talk about rumors, don't quote me. Your views, and then he talked about videos, seeing the interest of the woman coming from our soldiers. I'm not trying to misquote you. I'm just trying to see what is legit or not. What video? Did you just talked about rumors and saying white black. I never talked about APA. Can you please clarify what is actually rumor? Rumors you said in your video, and right here, white black talked about what Americans said in Discord. Do you understand French? We had never said Marvel's Capcom 4 was coming. Maybe it was as players' dreams as usual. But please stop miscommunication. Fair enough. Just because someone sent me this, I was. Mainly putting it out there for others to clarify. If there's no basis for it, then I suppose there's nothing else to discuss. Thank you for the reply. So that's interesting. I got lying now. Wait, really though? Yes. Basically, this is what the, this is what he replied right here. So basically, I sent the a screenshot of this as well. If you guys want to see in the main chat. So basically, from what it's saying right there, that it was most likely this miss information right there because of the solid translation that these guys got that's basically I, I see and um yeah i heard that it was a mistranslation but even if that source is not like saying something i think the the change in the marvel games to four could only hint about two things really it's either a marvel versus capcom game or a game surrounding the fantastic four because Let's not forget that they uh, just recovered that IP along with the X-Men. Mm -hmm. And the director of the MCU has already stated that we will be seeing all the mutants. And that includes probably the Fantastic Four as well. So it's either going to be a, a Fantastic Four game or a Marvel vs. Capcom game probably. Because those are their biggest IPs uh, that would have a sequel that would be four if we do not count infinite because for example marvel ultimate alliance uh they would have to release three i think or if they release like contest of champions they would have to release two so the four could only mean like a fantastic four related game or a marvel versus capcom game so let's see what they have to say and what they show us because there's nothing else we can really do but oh, let's yeah. hope it's oh, a marvel yeah. versus capcom game 
Yeah. If the if the, if the rumors are like false and one, no, it seems kind of like too obvious that they're yeah, like yeah, teasing something this year. I feel like I feel like we might get like a ball of fall sometime, you know? Yeah. Well, after reading these screenshots and this dude replying, like, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of disappointed. Like, the he basically just derailed any hope that people had about Marvel vs. Capcom 4. I mean, we it could still be one of those things where they're kind of like, oh, crap, we need to, like, you know, kind of make, like, tricking us, but they're really going to do it. But at the same time, like, that's a that's a stretch. And like he said, it could be Fantastic Four, which, I mean, they just got that property back, and for them to do something with it so fast, kind of it's kind of surprising to me if that's the case, you know? Yeah. As well, mm-hmm. it's, but for um, Terry Bogart right there, he's trying to make sure that he's not spreading mm-hmm. misinformation, even though he actually did misspread information right there. So it makes sense right there that he want like he wanted to freaking like get the trails back on with what he said right there because obviously if he's like if he like people thought that he was saying that mom was coming right there and he actually didn't say that right there he didn't want to freaking get a lot of people freaking sitting on him saying that what the hell what the fuck were you saying about that he was saying that. He'd never said anything about that. It was just various rumors that they were talking about in this thing right there. Then it's just I definitely like definitely just see why, why people like want to actually do that. But he's just covering his own ass because he doesn't want to freaking give false hope when he didn't like have like he didn't have anything to present to actually uh, get no like give people hope there. Mm-hmm. It's so, uh, it's mostly like it's mostly like misinformation, unfortunately. You know, it's sad things. You know. Yeah, so it makes sense that Terry Bocard right there, obviously right there, he does smite, smite, smite it down, but it's better to smite it down right there, and then freaking uh, like uh, give people false hope right there, and that's just like something that like people need to get false hope for, but it's uh obviously people want to get like want to play Marvel right, right now, you know, like want to get a new Marvel game, but obviously. He just like he's like just telling the truth that he did not freaking specify anything about Marvel at all because you know that's what he said. Yeah, so. I guess that all we can really do is wait and see because people in the industry are not gonna spoil it if it's something this big, and people uh-huh. outside the industry have no way of knowing. So, I guess let's just see what they do. They have to make an announcement soon if they change their logo like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's uh, wait until like let's uh, wait for like the next like couple months of this year you know, to to see what's going on with uh, Marvel Fun, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it'd be like a, it'd be like a missed like opportunity to like announce something for Marvel's Capcom, you know, because uh, Daisy Daisy is going on 20, 20th century Fox by this year and like get the movie rights for Fantastic Four and X Men, and uh, you think they will like you know like. Use use all that like bring back all those cat bring, bring back all those catas to the uh, Marvel's Capcom games, you know. Well. Mhm. Mhm. And those and those are and those are I would like to see like a uh, legacy collection of uh, all the previous like Marvel's Capcom games into like one, you know. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. Yeah, that would be well, nice. Well, it would be well, nice. Well, I mean, besides Ultimate Marvel, because that's that's all that's already like God we we release already so. We will see what happens, you know. Yeah, I guess we just gotta wait. Yeah, mm-hmm. def- definitely. Definitely, definitely we're getting to do about it. Well, let's uh, go on right here from like one of the sad Marvel news now to some good Marvel news, which is like a uh, tournament that happened that Yipes hosted with the Whoops was Battle of the Strongest Two, which is a Marvel vs. Capcom Two tournament. Which basically had not it's like it's not like a tournament right there, but it was high stakes money masses between like well known players that they're finding in Marvel's Capcom 2, which is basically one of the hypest games, like that basically like uh started the freaking craze of how, like how people love Marvel's Capcom games because of this game right here. So, mm-hmm. Mar- yeah, so basically, Battle of the Stones right there is basically Marvel vs. Capcom 2 right there. As you know, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 Marvel's is Captain one of the largest is. lost fighting games out there with 56 various stri- fight fighters in there. But this game right there is heavily 
unbalanced. Yeah. I mean, like, it's like some characters are like broken as hell, and some characters have infinites, and they're not top tier. And, and a game that basically like how it evolves like tossing right there is like very good. And if you lose a character in this game with it, it's so hard to come back because it's there's no combat mechanics. So that means you have to get the hit to actually come back. And there's and basically it requires you to know how to block right there and know like what button to press and everything. Um, and also and also yeah. like, and also and also like some like top tier teams like MSP can like destroy like the whole entire cast. Yeah, you know pretty I mean? much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, there's some characters like Storm that basically makes it so that un- characters cannot touch her at all because she just flies above the screen and there's nothing they can do about it. And in this game, there's also certain assists that are so amazing because of their anti air abilities and with the top tier being anti like characters that fly around the air you need to have the anti-air abilities to actually have a chance to actually do it. Mm-hmm. Because you need have the, have the ability to freaking stop their Vilesh's ass in right there and have abilities to freaking stop them from flying away all the time. What's basically... Yeah. Uh, basically uh, in, in this game right there, there game, is it a is certified top four, four, t- uh, top four uh, team. With, well, not top four characters. Top four there's four a Sentinel, Sentinel, Magneto, Storm... And there was uh, one more that was considered cable. Cable. C- cable. Uh, what says I'm, I thought it was uh, a different cable character. Uh, as I said, but it's basically like at least those top three. But Sentinel, Storm, Magneto, right there are the top three characters in the game. I mean, like those characters have a clear advantage over everyone else in the game. That basically that you need to have at least one or two of those characters to have a chance at high level if you actually want a chance. What's basically, What's basically the best character in the game is Sentinel and that's why you will always see Sentinel on high level teams because Sentinel is basically you need to have Sentinel to have a chance of winning. He's a he's a mega body but he's like ridiculous like crazy good in that game, you know. Yeah. So the yeah. thing that makes Marvel vs Capcom two a really hype game to watch besides all of these things where the top tier is so good that the low tier is not even worth using, is that every team composition in this game really matters. For example, uh, Magneto Storm Psylocke maybe has a very good uh, uh, matchup against a Sentinel team, but against other types of teams like, um, let's say, Chris Matrix's team, they're limited and constricted in movement to do Cyclops assist, right? So it's a lot mm-hmm. about matchups. And then there's a lot of teams that function similarly. Uh, let's say like Josh, three th- Josh 360's team with Iron Man is very heavily focused on infinites and guard breaks, right? So mm-hmm. if he kills a character, it's almost guaranteed that he's going to win the game because he's going to unbeatable you and then infinite you to death. So the way you fight that matchup is very different from the way you fight other matchups. So even if there's like maybe five or six viable point characters, there's so many types of team combinations that anything really can happen and you really need a lot of matchup knowledge for each of them. Because then there's also like some weird characters that if you don't know how to fight, you're going to get fucked up like Spiral or Blackheart that have like really very heavy spamming games and that makes them worth it, or even Team Clockwork with uh, Strider, Doom, Sentinel. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it's it really makes them viable because of the team composition. And this game is, I feel like the teams are the most important thing for the game. That's why losing a character fucks you up so bad because uh, you really yeah. need the whole team composition to make it work in the neutral and for the combos. Yeah. Definitely. That's why I couldn't get into Marvel 2, man. It was yeah. like way to, like, I mean, when I was getting into Marvel, it was way past Marvel 2's prime. And when I tried playing it, that's exactly what happened, dude. People would body me with Storm, Sentinel, and Magneto. And I'm like, what the heck do I do? Like, I lose one character, and then it's just like a downhill snowball, you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to, you need to, like, know, like, all the, the mashups, et yeah. cetera. And yep, you have to have mashups. You have to have movement too, and you have to like I know when to actually prop, prop, properly freaking go in right there, and properly like know when your 
opponent can use assist properly to actually save them right there or know how to convert off random hits because in this game right there um like there's certain characters that can revert off like random hits right there into very big damage or or basically or, or some characters basically that cannot characters. like do mu like, really much about it and uh, but there's some characters there's that some don't characters rely that off don't random hits some of them revolve, revolve off um not gimmicks right there but their tool set like strider strider basically revolves around having meter which will cause all balls like that which basically allows him to lock your opponent down with orbs so that they have to freaking block with that and they take a lot of chip damage and, and uh and doom assist as well yeah and doom, that and doom, like and doom assist right there so basically it does that or there's other characters like i know there's like other teams right there the more low tier teams but but, but there's a but team there's that i know that, that, is, know like, that um, is like um uh, that is a uh, BB is, uh, Hood and Juggernaut okay, team with out. Captain America, which is obviously is not a good design team, team. But, but if you do not yeah, block not while that team hyper right, right there, hyper you right instantly there, lose the character because that because they that, do a shit ton of damage to that game. Because mm -hmm. yeah, because Juggernaut and BB Hood right there, that's basically melts to like melts to freaking health, health bar. Instantly, that's because they, they for some reason did not figure out the scanning for that. But yeah, and there's there's certain assists that allow you to play some lower tier characters better. Yes. Uh, for example, Tron Bond's Y assist. Uh, if it hits you, it takes away like half of your meter. So oh, heck no. Nah. Yeah. It's called the the scrubby assist, but it's not actually worth it against a high tier team because the uh, for example like a Psylocke assist or a Cyclops assist is gonna keep her in check the entire time. But yeah. if you're trying to make like lower level characters have better damage, many people use like the trombone assist. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the, the the thing about this game is that your neutral has to be so on point so that you get the first kit, and it's so unforgiving, and the execution is so high level that Dude, it's right. really fast paced and is really hard to get into. As someone who grew up with an arcade culture of Marvel versus Capcom two. I saw all the broken stuff that you can see. And very uh, funnily, I think the best player where I live, his name is uh, Magus Old, and he used to be the guy that took care of the arcade, but he was also really good at playing. And he plays Hulk, Spider-Man, Hayato. Oh, and wait. That, oh, that, 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 that guy? Sounds... Oh, shit. Th oh, that wait, guy has, like, compilations of YouTube of just owning yeah. Ron Mito and players like oh, that. I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah. That I know who you're talking about now. I see his gameplay team. from before. That's a weird Yeah, you... I'll find you the link to him doing the Hulk Infinite that he invented. It's pretty fun. But he's, well, for example, <laughs> he's played Neo and other good players when they came to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I, feel, I, I don't know if he beat them or not, but I know he did pretty well, at least in the neutral. So with very hard work, you can make low tier work, but it's just not worth it if you're trying to pick the game up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, basically, basically, it's basically if you want to actually have a chance yeah, of winning right there, it's picking two little cute characters or picking an ultra character, Setno and like Commando, and that's basically like the best way you can actually have a chance of winning in this game right there. If you want to stick with low tier character. Yeah, Sentinel in this game is ridiculously retarded. Like, literally, you just have to fly up and just, like, do that kick that he does in the air. Kick, 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 unfly into super, and then kick, kick, kick. Like, it's just dumb, man. Like, that's why I was just like, I, this is way too much for me, man. And, that's, and then Marvel 3 came out, and I was like, all right, finally. Like, I can play a Marvel game. <laughs> but Marvel 2 is like, heck nah. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 right there. Uh, back in the day with them is known to actually have a very very prominent rule with some characters uh some players i mean not characters which basically had justin wong sanford and one other guy basically be the yikes. top yikes oh yeah yes i see yeah just i sort of fucking realized that uh basically being basically the most the basically being the three gods in the game that basically had basically that if you beat one of these three guys in that game right there, you basically are like, like, oh my god, this guy, this guy, it's like legit right there because, you know, there's no, like, because there's like, probably, sorry, sorry, having trouble finding words right there, but it's basically very tough right there to actually win. And also, like, Justin Wong won multiple 
like multiple freaking things in a row, and I think I I think Sanford did too. He won multiple like uh like evils in a row at Marvel's Capcom too, and he was like more one of the most dominant players in the game scene just because that he like won like so many years in a row, no one could freaking top him. And and it was with a uh, character like uh with his like main team of Sentinel. Uh, no, Storm Sentinel, Cyclops. But Cyclops had a very good sister there, and ever knows about his uh, comeback with, with Cyclops against the Yipes. Against, against the Yipes. Yipes. Against the Yipes. Dude, against... you know what's funny? That when I when I first saw that video, I was like, oh, okay, Justin Wong totally won that tournament. But actually, Yipes won that Yipes tournament. Won that Evo. <laughs> Bro, yeah, it was an Evo. Dang. Yeah, that was that was the Evo that Yipes won. And it was so, like, I would get the old VODs with, like, two years of delay over here in Mexico before YouTube existed. But watching those three guys play was definitely on another level. But it's so incredible because everybody else was so good, too. You had players like Smooth Viper, like Clockwork, like Doug Doe. Uh, Just Free like, Sexy. Yeah, like. Josh 360, I think he came a little bit later. I'm not sure. Oh, well, like uh, Cousin Paul, he told me. Yeah. Executioner as well. So, like very, very high level players. And the fact that every tournament was disputed between, or Fanatic 2, for example. But the fact that they, they were always at the top really says something about how good they were. Um, because to me, that's one of the most impressive feats to be so consistent in a game like Marvel 2. And it really made me happy to see that Yipes organized Battle of the Strongest too, along with uh, Sabin, I think. And I was just that about they, to ask about that. Yeah, that they organized it, and they did a Macherino crowdfunding, and they got over $8,000 for the round robin. Are you so, serious? Yeah, yeah man. dude, that, that's, that's crazy. Ridiculous. And it really motivated me as a Marvel 3 lover, for example, to see Yipes do this. I, sa I thought, like, why am I playing games that I don't like as much as the game I really like if they can do this? You know, if they can do this, I can do this for my game. And watching them just have fun at a house tournament and just play like the old times, it, it made me feel like we should really just forget about the esports thing and we can make it work through other ways. Like they got creative with the with the Macherino thing and mm -hmm. got so much money. Like Dude. what's really stopping the FGC? from um from doing the same thing for other games no if, if if we enjoy marvel 3 why don't we play marvel 3 or if we enjoy like uh arcana no, heart I, like I, why not play that or marvel infinite or bro. whatever game we really enjoy like why should we conform to the standards of esports when esports clearly doesn't care and the amount of money gotten over there i think if it's through a crowdfunding method it could eventually work out for the big tournaments so Again, that dude, was that so crazy, bro. And that's cool. Yeah, and that is true, bro. Uh, Marvel Infinite is still going strong. Uh, they've been doing uh, – Jaco himself, he's been hosting a lot of online tournaments with big pots. And uh, there's another uh, big tournament hosted by the guys at uh, Ralston Arcade. I see you, Hater. Don Con, also, the yeah, hater. Mm -hmm. Don Con, he's also uh, putting out a crowdfunded – tournament too with a big pot man like we're we're out here grinding and that's dude big props to yipes for, that's crazy dude eight thousand dollars like that's way bigger than a lot of uh a lot of tournaments these days man that's crazy, i know man dude. I want, I, yeah shout out to like yikes and like team spooky for doing this you know it's like pretty like incredible how like how they like manage to like get like this much like money from the match it's like, yeah. For, to for me, like it's like point. it's like incredible that they they did that and they did it for the game they loved, you know. So the love to, funny, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's to me that about. that was super inspirational. Like that's what I can take away from Battle of the Strongest, and also the very hype matches that we saw. We saw Josh three hundred and sixty come back from a very high deficit against uh executioner i believe we saw chris matrix step out of commentating and get back into playing doing well 
We saw Smooth mm-hmm. Viper play like a boss and calling out Neo for a money match. Oh, oh yeah, the pop off. That was, that that pop off was like godlike, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's an eight thousand dollar pop off, dog. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, bro. When somebody came out with eight grand, bro, that's that's literally here in Texas, that's eight months' rent. That's like literally like your whole year's rent in one just crowdfunding, dude. That's wild. Or like half a day in New York rent. <laughs> right? Yeah. Dude, yeah, still but... though, that's a big chunk of change, dude. That's definitely that... not no slouch money. That's a bag. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So that's that's what I take away from Battle of the Strongest. The obviously the high level play and watching a game that's so complicated and, and so skilled. But what it meant for the Marvel 2 community and what it meant for the rest of the communities of games that are not in like a pro tour or recent games, it, it means that you can still do what you like, bro. Like Smooth Viper clearly grind for that tournament and you could see. And having eight thousand dollars for playing the game you love the most, I think it really says a lot. So, what's really stopping other games from doing the same thing? If if you if you enjoy it, there's a very high chance other people enjoy it. Like, who doesn't love Marvel Three? Uh, the people in the Infinite community obviously love Infinite. So, it's just a thing of organization and knowing how to sell your game on on social media, but. It, there's nothing really stopping the FGC from growing in that way. It's a really interesting alternative to the whole esports movement. Let's all get sponsors. Let's all do this. Why not? I'm not down with that, man. Try to have I'm fun with, with others. Definitely, dude. I, I am not into esports at all, man. A lot of these dudes in esports, especially the organizations themselves, man, they're kind of fugazi, bro. Like smoke and mirrors type of thing, dude. Like. A lot of people who end up getting sponsored, they 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 end up not liking most some, most of it, most of the time, and um, you know they just act very shady and very weird, and you know it's always catered to what what games pop in, and sometimes those games in reality they just kind of suck, man, and they're kind of like I so for example I asked one I asked the sponsored player I was like because he sponsored for I think he was sponsored for like a couple different games but he uh, also like I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to that, I'm gonna get to that. okay I asked him I was like uh, he also likes to play infinite so that so he's an infinite player also but he sponsored for other games because you know they're not gonna give a sponsor out for infinite since it's not really like that mainstream but uh, I was like hey bro so since you're sponsored like Let's say one day you want to go to a tournament and like you just say, "Oh, I don't feel like playing Dragon Ball Z or Soul Calibur. I just want to play Infinite." Like, can you do that? Can you just say like, "I, I don't want to enter any of these other tournaments. I just want to enter the one game that I actually want to play that one day that I actually like more?" He's like, "Nah, man. Like, I have to play these games. Like, uh, that's what being sponsored means. Like, you have to play it. Like, you have to go to these tournaments and you have to play these games. Like." I was like, man, that's kind of whack, bro. Like, it, at the end of the day, like, me personally, I'm just a Marvel player. Like, that's all I want to play. And I might enter, like, something else just for fun. But, like, that's the only game I really want to play. And, like, if I was sponsored or something, like, you have to – you sign a contract saying, like, this is what you're going to play regardless. Like, even if it's not fun, even if you're having a, a terrible time with it, like – you're you're locked in to playing that game and that just does not sound cool to me man like you know what yeah. i mean the the esports is really weird because like as a sponsored player i know that there's very different approaches of what a sponsorship is or what it means but there's right? always like this pressure to perform And I feel like that same pressure is what makes players crack and eventually start underperforming. Like, we've seen countless players do really well and then get sponsored and then stop doing really well. And I I think that this is just the the tremendous pressure that you have that if you don't perform, you could lose the sponsorship or, or do bad. So I can only imagine, like, I'm very fortunate that my sponsor is actually godlike. And they actually help out whenever I need and stuff like that. And they're actually pretty relaxed, but they're also not a big organization. So I can only imagine like how big teams uh, 
they they have a very strict uh, way of dealing with players and stuff like that. So, but I, I think in general, maybe it's just my opinion, and maybe I may be uninformed. But the esports ecosystem it brings money, but I feel like it takes away what makes the FGC great. Like for me, when I discovered the FGC, I felt like it was a place where I could belong, where I could have fun, where I could be myself, where I could say stuff. And I feel that they're trying to turn it into something where you gotta be a certain way, you gotta play certain games, even if you don't like them, you gotta be um, always super respectful, you can't pop off. And Dude, right? I, that, right? That's, that's not what I enjoy, at least in the community. Like, when I play, I play without headphones because I like people talking crap about me because it gets me hype. But there's people that don't like it, and I respect that, mm -hmm. but I don't like that it's turning into a uh, Everybody golf clap all the time, you know? Right. And it's getting hella that's PC. That's my major too. problem with esports. It's like real sports are not even that way. If you go to a soccer stadium, you see everybody hypes, chanting ole, ole. Or if you go to watch uh, American football, you see everybody hype about a touchdown. If you watch baseball, everybody's trying to get drunk. So why are yeah, esports trying to be golf? Why? Why can't they be hype? And that's that's my main problem with esports. And even if it brings all the money and whatever you you hear about esports, like if it's taking away the fun for from you, is it really worth it? Like, why exactly. not just get a job if you're if you want to do esports? You know, like why not just get a real job if you if you really need that? Like, because not everybody's getting paid. There's being delays on many tournaments paying. Uh, and you're you're not having fun. Like, what's what's the deal with that? Why not have fun? Exactly, Definitely, man. Bro. Definitely, I hundred percent agree with that. That whole golf clapping thing. Everybody's trying to be all PC. You got to watch what you say. Uh, you say the wrong thing. Somebody's gonna go complain in response and be like, "Oh, he said this and that." Like, bro, there's a lot of things being said in a, in a fighting game, man. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, you know, rattle you. I'm trying to, you know, crack you mentally. I might say 20. some stuff. You know, I might say. Hype, you know? Exactly. I might over here look at you and be like, bro, you're, you're trash, dude. Why are you playing me right now? You gonna <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get in your face, bro. Like, I, I always, look. yeah, uh -huh. I always compare the FGC to like rap battle culture. Because Rip, yes, even if dude. you really disrespect the opponent, everybody knows it's in good fun. The problem is that people are starting to forget it's for fun. And if somebody says like, yo, you're ass or you're pretty bad or, or something like that, they don't actually mean to hurt you personally. One thing is a personal attack and the other thing is just popping off. And I feel like that the the community with the newer players and the all the esports movement is moving towards being very... Uh, disassociated from from that, from like having fun and just popping off and knowing that it's a game. In the end, it's a game. It's just a game, you know. I know, I know why they get like so like offend, offend, offended when uh, when when all the players like call call someone out. You know, I mean, it's all it's all for like all good fun, you know. Not exactly, not, man. Not too pussy, you know. You know, it's it's exactly. uh, it's up to it's up to the uh, the play if they want to be like sponsored or like oh no, nah, you know, it's up to them. I respect it all, but uh, you know. It is what it is, you know. Yeah, definitely, man. That's yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Shout out to Yipes and uh, the whole everybody who donated to that match. Arena. y'all, the y'all are two damn y'all the real ones, man. The real MVPs. We it's can Marvel, all, baby. yeah, we can all take some notes from that for sure. So yeah, definitely. What was uh What was the favorite like moment from the uh, the tournament itself? Like any like moments, highlights. highlights? Uh, for me, it was Josh 360 being down like 4-0 and turning it around 5-4. Damn, oh, yeah. he won? That, he, he didn't win the tournament, but he was... The, so everybody had to play first to fives for the round robins. Uh -huh. And he was down by a very large margin against Executioner, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm pretty sure it was Executioner. And he just turned it around. He just like warmed up the Iron Man and starting firing off infinites, dude. And seeing a hype comeback like that, it's it's always really great for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, who won the the tournament? Actually, I only like watched like half of it, but I haven't like finished it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, who won? I don't know. Uh, I oh, the, the, the tournament, uh, Smooth Viper won. Okay. With Jay for okay, that's pretty coming cool, second. Yeah, it was Dang. Smooth Viper one, Josh 360 second, and Chris Matrix third. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sick, man. You know, shout that out to Smooth uh, Viper for uh, grinding mode too, man. Back, yeah, back definitely game. always been a threat. And after winning, he called out Neo like, when are we playing? That that's that's a pretty hype thing to do because mm -hmm. they were both known for their money matches. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so definitely I did like uh, watch the two of there, but definitely is very a uh, very uh, high, high tournament right right now. Um, so uh, let's uh, go talk about um, another tournament that happened uh, we got, uh, about a week ago or so, which was. Um, the Cooperation Cup, which is a Japanese tournament for Third Strike. Third Strike is obviously the third installment of the third fighting, a uh, third street fighting game, uh, for, uh, Street Fighter Three Third Strike. What series? Right, there was there was Street Fighter Three, Three. New Generation, then Second Impact, and Third Strike. Third Strike, right there, is a was back in the day considered a black sheep of the fighting game community because it was not fun. Then something happened which made this game one of the hypest fucking games to fucking watch. Uh, Street Fighter Five, uh, Street Fighter uh, Three, right there, first strike there is a a unique game because of various things. It has various characters there and very unique things. It has a the parry system, which allows you to freaking parry an attack by hitting forward. Uh, or yeah, down, or down at the same frame when the opponent hits a button right there and you're in the hitbox of, which allows you to pay the attack and actually basically can't go back and actually uh, have an action before that. And basically it's a uh, mind game type thing where if you're going to pay right there and also if you can block stuff right there, which can save your life. Um, first, this uh, tournament right here is a cooperation cup is basically a 5v5 team tournament which if you know what a team tournament is it's basically uh two teams that fight, fight it out like and try to whip try to beat each other with that and in first strike it's uh basically a, a, a one a one set meaning like not one match like there was basically a two out of three like a round that basically if you win right there you would go on you beat the tournament and then the next player comes up right there and fights the next one. Whoever wins the most matches out of it right there, and it's actually a pretty interesting tournament because it's not like a third, a first strike tournament where um, basically it's one v one right there. It's basically you, your entire team has to freaking like uh, win right there. I mean, they have to win as many matches as possible to actually go on. What's but first strike? It's one of one of the hypest freaking fighting games out there. If you ever would watch that right there. You probably known about the um, probably known about the diagram of what's happened in Third Strike against Justin Wong, which is one of the hypest freaking things you actually could do, and probably one of the most well-known fighting game moments of all time. Y yeah, Talking about the Daigo moment. Yeah, the the Daigo moment was in Third Strike. Yep. Um, yep. but w what makes Third Strike really hype is that since Parry can punish any anything. You're always at the risk of being punished, so no match is ever the same. You know, you always mm -hmm. have to like bury it up because you can't get predictable with your with your attacks, or you're gonna get parried and died. It's like see the Daigo and Justin video. That's the prime example. And you also, you can't be predictable. And, and also, yeah, sorry. and also with parries, that there's actually a risk for parries at there because your opponent can read. Your parry and punish it with a super that has a visibility on it right there to actually punish your parry. So there's you know a um, like a high risk high reward type of thing with parries sometimes. Yeah, it's it's always a mind game in third strike, and I believe that what makes Cooperation Cup really hype is one, it's single elimination, so you never know what's gonna happen, and two. It's a team tournament, and team tournaments really lend themselves to be hype, because maybe uh, you can your team is getting bodied, and then you turn it around, and you feel really hype. So seeing the, it's the same thing as I was saying before, like seeing people get hyped for their game and have fun, 
is always really cool. And what I really like about Cooperation Cup is they always do a pre-Cooperation Cup tournament where you can only team with people that play your same character. So it's like a fight to see which character is the most godlike. And uh, this year, the, the team I Ibuki, which is not a as high tier as a character as Chun Li or Yun, got second oh. place with with the all the Ibukis put in the work and almost won. But in the wow. end, team Team Yun ended up winning the pre cooperation cup. So that that was a pretty hype moment for me. And of course, seeing the the main tournament is always really hype because it's always really varied teams and very talented players. So I don't know if you guys watched any of it or, or if you guys have any highlights of it. I watched like a little bit of it. I says I watched like a good portion of it right now, but obviously um, there is a lot of different unique things right here that like um, like Makoto. Makoto is actually probably one of the most interesting fighting game characters out there because in theory on paper she's she's not that good. Because she doesn't have good lows and everything like that. She has a command guard that doesn't have the longest reins. She has, like, no ways to hit and firm besides stand heavy and cut up other more normals right there. She has a weird move set right there and everything like that. But the thing about her is that she makes everything scary because of two things. Because her command grab. Command, her call, command guard that leads... To multiple things. Well, one is basically it puts you in a like situation that you have to be careful if she's gonna command grab again right there, or do something that to hit you on the air or just throw you, or if she has full a, a bar a meter using a certain critical art, uh, you know, uh, super art, she can actually touch a death you if she does the proper combo for it, which is also a really hard combo to do. And because of this, that she can toss a death any character at full health, and like besides like 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 one or two characters depending on it, which that means that she can literally freaking make you not be able to play the game if she command gobs you. That's kind of yeah. broken, bro. Makoto is the ultimate grappler, but the thing about Makoto is that doing that touch of death sequence or the touch of death resets takes really high execution. There's pretty much only two Makotos doing that type of damage right now, and we actually saw them at the top of the tournament. Uh, we saw Haitani put in work in the first place with Team Dream, but the one that was doing the really hard timing combos and the, the really hype stuff was actually Tominaga with his Makoto. There's actually a clip of him just erasing his opponent. Uh, What's with the awesome? double, uh, what's the Makoto's DP's name? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, let, let me check the, the move set out. Uh, I know what you're talking about, I just don't know the name of it. It's the up punch. Let me let me get the exact name. The fu Is it the Fukiage? Yeah. Yeah, Fukiage, I think. Yeah, the double Fukiaga combo was very hard to do, and Tommy Naga was absolutely landing it every time. So it was pretty hype for me to watch, and him putting all the work in. Yeah, so let me try to find. I'm trying to find the clip real quick. Uh, there's a, there's a ton of fucking there's a ton of freaking uh, clips right there. Like there's um, also a lot of like well known fighting game players that are were at this right here that are like. Some of the best freaking players of those of those characters, like obviously that there's uh, RX right there. There's um, Hayato, I believe. Let me, uh, oh, okay, one second. All the all the freaking all the freaking things I have right there are not like, not sewn up right here. Yeah, there's players like Deshi Ken with his Ken Nuki, of course. The the combo, the Beauty and the Beast with Daigo he, with his Chun Li. Uh, Kenzo's Yang, we saw MOB with his Chun Li as well. We saw some low tier picks like Vanao putting in work. Uh, we have we also saw players like uh, Momochi compete. We saw uh, there was an American team in top eight for the first time, uh, Team Los Batos Locos with five star Tenren, Osha Mambo, Aaron, and Ryan. That's pretty impressive. Um, there was many players like Mester, 
uh, Michael Tan, who have been who have really excelled in other games, but they always come back to to Street Fighter Three and have fun at least once a year, you know. And I feel like that's something that's really important for a game, and that's why Cooperation Cup is watched by everyone and so hype all the time. Yep. Uh, here is the Makoto clip, I believe. Go. Now, final round. Okay, now this is a different Makoto clip, but you can see how scary Makoto is. Go. Now, final round. This is not the test of that. You can see how scary Makoto is in this game. Yeah, definitely very scary. I believe that's Tominaga in the clip, right? Yeah, look. Yeah, basically, uh, let's see. Let me see. Here's another one. Here is a um, here's a comeback right here, but Yurian. That that one should be the comeback with Yurian right there. This is RX right there, which is RX is one of the most probably well known like a Yurian players out here. Ah, <laughs> Yeah, that, that clip is dangerous. <laughs> Dude, this Yurian comeback though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good RX. Bro, that was nuts. So RX is a Japanese player that lived in Brazil for a long time. What? And, yeah, and everybody was always like, yo, RX is a god. RX is a god. He's the best Yurian. And when he returned to Japan, he started like... Every Yurian unblockable clip back in the day was from RX, so people are like, is he real or is he just beating on Brazilians? And then when he came back to Japan, he put in the work so hard, dude. RX is b the best Yurian player by far. I freaking love that highlight, man. That Yurian comeback, dude. It's like oh, gloss yeah. okay, as hell. Here, here's, a, here's another freaking, uh, here's another like, like, a clip that I want. This is Necro. Necro is a very interesting <laughs> character. Like, he has a mixture of moves. <laughs> with, um, like, he's like a mixture of Blanca and Dalsa. <laughs> Which is crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Dude is weird. But I kind of like him. And that's how you know, that combo that he did in this clip right here, it's a very fucking hard combo to do. It's like a one frame link that he did. Really? <laughs> that corner combo? Yeah, that corner combo is a very fucking hard combo to do. <laughs> Damn. He made it look kind of easy, man. Dude didn't even try. It looked like he freaking didn't even have to try to land that. <laughs> well, it's really hype. Okay, another thing too is that another in first strike, uh, taunts actually have uses in first strike. You know how like in other fighting games, taunt right there just makes you make you like um, try to make the punk get angry right there, and try to show you and everything. No, in third strike, taunts have uses. Some of them did not know that. Some of them, yep. Say, yep. Some of them are not that useful. Like, like uh, twelve is basically turning invisible. That's basically just a troll taunt. But there's other taunts that actually are really good. Like Dudley's taunt throws a rose. That rose that allows him to get good Oki off that because it makes it actually has a hitbox on it, so that you have to block it. While yeah. with, while with um a like can right there, Necro, Chun Li right there, they get a stun or damage buff when they taunt. I mean, like, the, the next kit that they do right there, or well, that's combo, I don't know what one exactly is, they actually do they more damage or more stun on it. Well, Q has probably, like, the most interesting taunt in the game that you want to actually land. He, he has a ta his a taunt that there allows him to get a damage, uh, another damage right there, like a defense buff that increases his health. And if he does, the, if he does three taunts in a round, he basically gets double the health. So that means your opponent has to work twice as hard to actually KO you. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. And that compensates for Q being arguably the worst character by far in the game. No, or uh, one of yeah. the worst. Basically, the, uh, basically the, the two... Up well, there with Sean. Uh, like I say, actually, I say say that Sean and um, 12 are probably the two worst characters in the game. But like Sean, because he like his like things up there, he got nerfed severely from second impact. 
because he was like top tier in second impact and he got freaking yeah. like nerfed to hell like he his dp got changed right there like his like his critical arts got nerfed to hell and everything like that and 12 right there basically is just an annoying character but he does yeah, he city does. fucking damage that basically, that basically and also he fucking cannot he his basically his, most of the time his best punish from a parry is set is crossing my kick that's his best that's his best damage like for best damage uh like a punish for a parry right there <laughs> and uh and uh no and not that much combos wise with the cat yeah. as well yeah yeah basically 12 right there is like a really like bad, a thing. bad thing that's because he's not well designed but q obviously is not a good character but he has like interesting tools and everything like that like he has weird normals and everything like that but he has you know that right there he has some very good critical arts for that he has like uh weird things but he is but he fucking gets mauled by certain characters it's like makoto versus q is like the worst fucking match of the game <laughs> damn or young or chun li or those guys yeah, and well, um but you know what's really interesting about q and this is always a good story about third strike there used to be a, a there still is but he's in prison right now play a player named kuroda yeah who was so incredibly good that he could beat players like MOB or other really, really, really strong players with really strong characters like Yun and Chun Li with Q. He was so good that he would just pick low tier characters just to fight them, you know? So Wait, that's actually damn. pretty crazy. Kuroda is probably considered the best third strike player of all time, but he got into some scandals with minors, R. Kelly style, so he's in prison oh. right now. Well, that's, that's been unfortunate, man. Yeah. Yeah, but I always try to separate the player's skill from the person. And as a player, Kuroda is by far the best third strike player. As a person, he might not be the greatest person. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. You can't. You can't knock the man's skill. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? So if you guys are looking into third strike and to, trying to okay. get into it, definitely check out some Kuroda. Okay. Yeah, this like this video I believe this video has one of the best fucking combats I ever seen from Godora. It's a uh, it's against a young player, so let me find. Let me... Okay, one second. Let me just turn this down real quick. Uh, let me try to find it real quick. Okay, okay, okay. So okay, um, okay, let's go to, okay, go to like 640 yen. Okay. 640 yen. <laughs> I had forgotten this comeback. Why is Kuroda so good? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, yeah. with Q? Holy crap. Dude, he's living on a pixel, bro. Yeah, and ba basically, he fight like, with, uh, with Kodoro. Oh my god, are you I, serious? That is, one of my, <laughs> that is one of my favorite fucking combats with Q right there. That's because That's that pain in the that super right there. Also, um, also um, in, the, in this game in right, this there, right there, obviously, certain, certain critical arts are very freaking good. Right. In this game, like, like you always want to pick uh, like Critical Art three with Ken. You want to pick Super Art two with Chun Li. You want to pick like Geninzen with like with with uh like with Young, but like some other characters, you don't need. You can actually pick whatever Super Art you want right there. They actually have a good thing, like Q and Q. It's the massive dependent. Like his critical art two does like massive amount of damage. So on characters with low health, he wants to pick that critical art because that freaking wipes about half the health off. While with characters with more health right there, he wants he you want to have critical art one right there to do more damage. And also his critical art one allows you to uh get a taunt afterwards, which allows him to get more health. While Dudley can pick like his like like his critical art one or Three, three allows him to get more meter, but like one right there allows him to actually get uh, better drug output and more damage output. Uh, while Makoto obviously can see can do critical art one to actually uh, 
do a, a mass amount of damage, or if you're good enough, you can quit Critical Art 2 to actually do the types of death combos if you have good death cues and everything. That's crazy, dude. Holy crap. So, yeah, Third Strike is actually out there, and then, uh, but obviously there's, uh, there's, like, characters in this game that, that are considered, like, broken in this thing. Chun-Li is known to be the best character in the game, because... That's sad. Because, basically, she has priority up the thing for days, her causing minion kick has so much um, leeway to like combo into critical art. It's so good. Her card command go is scary as fuck because she can just like you know like call command go and wake up like that because her freaking call command go has fucking huge fucking range on it. And and basically you have to be wary of that or also meaning up in the in the critical art. And basically she has so yeah, many freaking so scary tools for it. Well, Yon right there, basically, right there, basically, basically he, is he is only good because of Ganinzen. Because, because, because basically, right because when you build when freaking Ganinzen right there, you activate it right there, and your opponent and has to respect your ass. ass. And if you freaking uh, don't respect him right there, you get literally freaking comboed, and then he, like, after the super ends right there, he literally builds enough bar to almost get another Ganinzen afterwards. Because he his super bar is so freaking short. And then Yorian... Uh, allows him to uh, basically have Angus Reflector. Unblockable. Unblo yeah, unblockable setup right there, and also forces you to be in the corner right there, meaning like it's controlled space too, so that so one, that. you can get combos off it, and then you can do mix up afterwards for it. And then Ken right there, because Ken has ability to easy get easy damage off his meter right there, and also has EX moves, so like you can get EX Fireball, get, um, he can get, uh, uh, like, well, actually, it's more EX Fireball, but easy confirms in the super right there, and basically allows him, and that allows him to get easy super. Well, well, other characters out there, like you can like really pick with there, and some and but some some things are just bad as hell. But basically, at this tournament, you will see a lot of Kens, you will see a lot of a lot of Youngs, you will see a lot of Chun Lees, you will see Makotos, yeah, you will see Urians, Urians, you will see Dudleys, you will probably see a decent amount of Kumas, and then um, then it will start to be going down a bit of it. Like you'll probably see an okay amount of Hugos because Hugo is actually a, a pretty okay character because people would consider him as a bottom tier character, but he actually went up to the Hugos a bit a while back. Then, uh, there were many Yangs this tournament as well. Yang is another character that's a sleeper. Yeah, yeah and yeah. yeah, and to me the greatest surprise was actually seeing the the Ibuki team almost win the pre cooperation cup against the Yun team. So that was pretty hype. They de defeated two Chun Li teams and the Bakoto teams. So yeah. It was actually pretty hype, and Ibuki is a very, uh, not as great character as the others. Still pretty solid, but definitely not in the same tier as those characters you were mentioning. Yep, because if you also didn't know, Ibuki right there and uh, in second impact right there was considered probably the best character in the game besides like Akuma, which I think people might consider borderline broken in the game. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I know like one of the reasons why is because you cannot... He can freely get in no matter what you do because he, you cannot punish his dive kick at all. And ba even if you pay right there, it's like unpunishable or something like that. For now. I'm not 100% sure why people Akuma's banned right there. But Ibuki has tons of death combos for days in the game on certain characters. And he and see her critical is very fucking good. So obviously, like with the big Ibuki gets a big nurse just because, you know. The baby so that she can't freaking touch the death you like off of anything. But then they introduced Makoto right there, but you know, her combo is very hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's other characters I actually okay. liked seeing in the thing was Hugo. Hugo is another fucking character I really like really enjoyed seeing. Hugo is a very interesting character. Like you would never, never see him using his heavy normals at all. He uses either mediums or mediums or lights because his like he the only there's only one normal you probably will see him right there, which is probably his standing heavy, depending on what he does. His uh, his crossing normal, uh, his crossing things like that are very good. But he has very 
interesting thing because he's very care, very very very, care, very scary because he has a lot of help on the game. He has command grabs, which basically is very good. He has an anti-air command grab, which is not the best, but it still will grab you off that. He has a, like a level one super that does probably like sixty percent of your health bar if you uh, are able to get it, which is uh, Gigaton Press. I believe, and then he has some very good yep. things. He also, his yep. also, um, his slaps right there are one of the scariest things about him because he he can combo slaps together yep. and basically he can like stun you almost yep. with just doing basic slap combos. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But obviously, Hugo has you know very hard things because since he's a big character right there he gets fuzzy guarded for days he has you know trouble against certain characters that can fuzzy guard him like uh necro uh not necro um oro uh obviously chun Li right there and a couple other characters have you know like well very like hard times but that's because you know they're talking and everything like that um yeah, a lot. There's a lot of freaking good characters to actually watch in this game. One, first Strike is actually one of my favorite games to watch. That's because, one, because of the page system right there, you don't know what to expect right there, and also like, also like there is character variety in it. Like, because uh, um, some people will actually play low tier just because they actually like low tier characters. Not obviously not like uh you like seen and or twelve because those are like more troll picks, but all the other characters you actually will see at a decent level sometimes. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I like Third Strike too, man. It's always interesting to watch. I never really got into it just because like the learning curve was too high for me personally. Yeah. But uh, it is a good game to watch for sure. Like those clips that you sent, man, those are kind of crazy. Yeah, but. Basically, but there's some amazing tech out there for various care for various characters, and this game is fucking hype. It's like one. Of, yeah, that's like, what happens when a game develops with time, and is just mastered to such a degree that you get to see really hype stuff. Like for example, with ST, many people thought that T Hawk was actually low tier, and then like 15 years later or something like that. They found an option select where he basically grabs you if you don't do anything. He DPs you if you jump, and he he normal grabs you if you try to normal grab his command grab. So T Hawk went from being the lowest tier character in the game to one of the topest tier characters in the game. Yeah. And I feel like that's wow. just the beautiful thing about yeah. old games that never really got like the patch treatment. Uh, that you just had to adapt and you just had to come up with new things and eventually uh, things get discovered and they change the way the meta works. So it's definitely really hype to see games like Marvel 2 or Third Strike where they're so developed that you you just have fun watching them and you just respect the skill and the dedication of the players. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure, dude. Holy crap. Def definitely there. Yeah. That's why that's why people like to see it right there because even though people hate Sean Lee or seeing Ken's or seeing Guns right there, right there. there are character loyalists that ask for so off new things. And with the cooperation cup right there with having so much character variety right there, it, it makes it so that you're not gonna see the same freaking three characters all over again. You will actually see Which is that. good. That's yeah. good. I like that. Yeah, so that's what that's why uh, I freaking love this love this thing, and I freaking like played it like that, and I love freaking seeing high level play. That's because like it's like in in this game right there, you have to freaking know when to do it right there. And the page system is like the but the highest like highest rewarding thing you can do right there because if you can know you can when know to pay at the right pay. time right there, you will have the biggest freaking opportunity to actually do it. Because look what happened. Like I like like Daigo no was my freaking uh inputting parry during that time was walking back and forth and he inputted the right pair at the right time and that hit and the most iconic funny game moment happened because of it. Dude, the most iconic. Yeah. No one will ever freaking forget that. Yeah, it's that's the most watched gaming um uh, clip of all time. It actually has a Guinness World Record. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Dang, I did not know that. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Big time. Big time, big time. Okay. Speaking of gaming, should we talk about um, 
uh, high score girl, because that's definitely related to Street Fighter. Sure, let's uh, let's actually go to that next. We were going to go to Smash, but Smash, could, we can like, definitely talk about Smash in a little bit, because it means a good segue. Uh, basically, uh, High School Girl is a like anime that was adapted from a manga back in the day, right there, which was a, um, I'm, I'm, I think it was started in like 2016 or something like that. It's it okay. starts basically uh, these two characters right there that basically uh, went to. Uh, went to uh, an arcade in Japan in the 1990s at that one. It actually was starting to go like uh, uh, go big, which basically uh, because of that, that they got in they freaking like basically became friends over the love of passions of video games. Uh, but what the main character is? Um, Haru. How do you know? Ha- Haru. Yeah, basically he is basically an average freaking. Uh, like teenager, like you no, know, like middle school kid right there that basically doesn't like when his son is right there. He loves to freaking play video games in the spare time he wants to go to arcade right there. And then we have like Ono, Akira, that basically yeah. is a a girl that basically is uh like like taught like is a basic in a basic household right there that basically is trying to get into the highest school classes right there that with very sick parents. But she found in the time that she can play arcade right there and unwind and everything like that. And during getting a favorite moment in Street Fighter 2, uh, where basically he was playing Guile and he, and she was playing Zangief, but we played it out right there. And then basically what happened is after like this guy was playing a very total guy right there against Zangief, the girl punches him in the face and they get banned from the arcade. <laughs> Because if because she was getting very freaking sick of it and everything like that, and but because of that they freaking start uh, bonding with each other because the girl is a very quiet type of girl that that doesn't like to talk to often while the guy it, loves to talk about video games he loves to talk about video games and everything like that and they freaking like uh, bond together over that because she likes video games too even though she doesn't talk about them much. And but she has has she cannot play video games in her house because it's a very strict household and she basically wants her to make sure that she's on her studies. She's like doing stuff besides you know playing video games in her spare time. Definitely. Damn, I've I've never seen the anime, but I've heard so much good stuff about it. And now that I hear a little bit more about the plot, it gets me really excited because. I feel like arcade culture is a thing that not many people live through, but the ones that did is like such Yo. a great memory, you know, and, and such a fun time. And if this anime actually manages to relive what what you lived the years ago, it's obviously such a, a good nostalgic trip and with, with good nods and it makes you like so happy. Dude, yes. okay. I'm about to start gushing over this thing right now because I can tell you for from me watching and finishing the whole thing already like this show is amazing dude okay i wasn't in arcade culture okay i am kind of i was uh too young for it like when i was being bored our arcade culture was already like a thing and it's definitely been a thing in japan so if you're watching this and you got to experience that like in those old japanese style arcades and stuff Dude, this this show is really, really you're really gonna love it. And um, one thing that I really like resonated with is like, okay, so he's the kid is in middle school, right? And he's like growing up, and he's like really into video games, and he goes to the arcade and stuff, playing Street Fighter. Like every like, okay, it literally like goes through like a whole like chronological like step by step of the evolution of games because it's not only just like uh 2D fighters like. There, there's uh, references to 3D fighters, like, and it gives you like a really good history of like this, the the evolution of the video games. Like, yeah. it goes from the 2D fighters into the evolution of the 3D fighters, and then it also goes into like home consoles and like the evolution of home consoles from like all these retro classic, like uh, the NES, uh, the PlayStation, the Dreamcast, the Sega's, like it, sh- it goes step by step, like through all of those like periods of time. Oh yeah. And I remember like, real quick. Let me something yeah. real quick. Uh, basically 
Also, oh, this game does not do the freaking ploy of faking games. No, they actually reference real titles from all these things. They don't reference any like fake games. They reference real titles and use real footage from games. And they also uh, have people recording them from the real footage right there and actually uh, doing real type of like gameplay to like match the scene right there. That's yes, exactly. Yeah, that's all I want to mention right there. But yeah, it's real footage right there from real games right there, and it's real yeah. message right there. It's because this guy, like, ruled in the, like arcades and I did, and he is by like, talking about all of these games that he like grew up in his childhood, and this freaking what is messing right there. You can, you can go on and let you talk and that's what I'm that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, um, and like I said, going through that evolution, like, uh. It was really crazy because I remember growing up, like, when I went, my first game system ever was a PlayStation, and the games that I had for the PlayStation were Tekken, like, cra Tekken was my first fighting game ever, and they, I had Tekken 2, and then I had Tekken 3, and then I had all the Tekkens, and then I started playing Street Fighters, like, the EXs and all that stuff, and, um, yeah, man, it was crazy to, like, a crazy little trip to, like, go down uh it's just like you know traveling through memory lane and another cool thing is like when i first moved to austin i actually visited like a retro style old japanese arcade for the first time and i was kind of like blown away like the whole like you know you can play on one cabinet and like on the other side is your opponent playing on the other cabinet and like it's a lot of fun man and uh this this anime got it right to the T, bro. Like everything is super authentic, and um, they it, it just kind of like showing like how much like fighting games have come over the years, and how much of an influence they've had over people's lives, and like they're slowly but surely becoming more mainstream, which is great. And um, but it, it's also kind of like um, <clears throat> it's also kind of like now it's maybe it's like approaching that point in time where it like might get uh, exploited and you know used for corporate game which i'm not really a fan of but i can tell you that um this anime man it's just like super authentic like they even like they even say some of like the you know the good old fgc lingo you know what i mean like they <laughs> i remember one time uh in the show uh hit, they were playing the game they're playing street fighter and he's like why is this girl so godlike you know just he hearing that and you know just being just from being in the fgc so much it just kind of like made my face light up you know i was just kind of like wow like dude you know this this isn't yeah, just definitely. like a this is getting like a big like it just shows how far fighting games can reach people you know what i mean which is great i love that part of it and uh, and on top of that, the the little plot, like the love story, it's like hella shojo and cute, and I really like it. It might not be for everyone, but the thing that just like drew me like from the jump was like the fighting game aspect of it. Like they literally like re this this anime represents the culture really well, dude. Like if you have not seen the show, I a hundred percent recommend it. Like it's really like. The, the love story, it kind of gets, like, a little cheesy and, you know, all predictable and stuff. It has, like, those typical, like, anime tropes of, like, the shoujo love story with, like, the girl and the guy. And then, like, the, there's, like, a third girl who's, like, really in love with the main character also. And, um, but, yeah, man, just, like, the whole experience. And another cool thing is that it's produced by Square Enix, bro. And the animation style of the show is actually, like, what a one of my favorite animation styles because it just like it, it just like pops off the screen like really nicely and the dub is actually really good like i don't have any complaints with the dub uh all around man i give this show a 10 out of 10 if you're a fighting game lover and if you really like the culture you've been in the fgc for a minute you're gonna really enjoy this show like a hundred percent a hundred percent. It's on Netflix. You need to watch. It's like ten or twelve episodes. It's uh, it's twelve episodes, but there's gonna be three more episodes that are gonna be airing in April, I believe, or March. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah. yeah, that's but, actually yeah. super hype. And hearing it from you guys, it makes me really excited. And it's definitely the the next show I'm gonna watch. The last anime I watched was Boku no Hero because my friends were like, "Yo, watch it! It's hype!" And I watched it. 
And as a comics fan and an X-Men fan, it made me really hype. So having a, a gaming anime now tailored towards what I love is definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So thanks for the, the recommendation and the discussion, guys. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I'm telling y'all, man. It's it's a, it's a 10 out of 10 for me, man. Yeah. Like, for sure. Yeah, the only thing is that um, it, it does end on a cliffhanger at the moment, but obviously uh, with the OVA coming out right there, that's going to be uh, doing that. But um, I don't know. The the OVA is not going to get that far in the manga. So hopefully this should like be grown enough that I can get a second season. Okay, Zerms. How many uh, manga entries are there? There's supposed to be 65 uh, like chapters, and it, and 65 is the last chapter. Uh, and I and right now there's I believe 51 transitive chapters that I can find. So that's that crazy. Because uh, I'm a, I'm not an or I'm not a manga collector. Like I the mangas that I collect are like very very special. And I can tell y'all right now that I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy all of these mangas, man. Because I have I have my collection of mangas that like I really really like. They're not like you know like Naruto's or like Dragon Ball Z's. They're like really short and contained, like Death Note. And um, but this is definitely one that I'm definitely gonna go out. Like I'm a I'm a hundred percent a fan. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy like the mangas and just kind of read up and stuff. Because that's how good it is, and that's how much like it really represents like the fighting game culture, like to a T, like. So much that like I have like a huge appreciation for what they just did. Like I remember I was like scrolling on Netflix and I was like I saw this thing High Score Girl. Like, dude, the intro, the outro, everything about it was just like so perfectly executed. It's just like amazing. So I can't I can't say enough good stuff about it. Obviously, you guys know I'm like super excited to talk about it. Yep. It says, I, I'm yeah, it's there. it's really exciting to. Oh, I'm sorry. What's up? So it's just a little bit of points right there. Basically, the there's only like there's only a couple of small points right there um, with, that I kind of dislike. Which mainly it's because they expl they freaking explain way too much on some of the games that they have to talk about. And then, but you know, they're, they're explaining basically for like the English class right there for, like for it. But I would say right there, it's not a huge deal because you know it's just like the, the it sounds more like an af they're trying to advertise games like in some of this. But I don't mind it as much. But that's really the only like small thing about it besides you know obviously the freaking uh the the not not the Greece, uh, the tropes that are in it right there. But those are fine tropes right there because I really enjoy this freaking thing too. Even though even though those are two my two my small gripes. But I still right, really, right. really enjoy this right there. I definitely would still recommend watching this. Definitely, dude. I I definitely want to watch it now. And I agree that having representation in, in mainstream media is very important. Uh, that's part of why I decided to study communications. Because when I was younger, gaming was not like not well seen. And... Many people were surprised, like, oh, wow, you're a gamer, but you're like a normal person, right? And and they didn't really understand, like, video game culture and uh, arcade culture. And slowly having these types of shows and having, like, all this good uh, content uh, talking about how we live, how we get hype, uh, how we uh, just do things, it's, it's definitely amazing. And I'm definitely going to check out High School Girl because of this. Definitely, man. You should. You should. Yeah, same here, man. Yep, same, same here. Uh, also, uh, like with the man, with the manga, how it is going with it, there's gonna be some amazing fucking arts in it that I actually really enjoy seeing like that. Uh, like there's a big art that I really want to see coming right there, and it actually should be like a very well executed art that's do it well enough. I'm not gonna spoil it because yeah, no spoilers for the love of God, no spoilers. Okay, okay. But cool. But yeah, but okay. The only thing I would say that is fighting game related, and that's it. <laughs> nice, dude. I cannot wait, man. Wow. Season. I I was sad when it was over. Like, I was just fuck. Like now I don't I don't even know when the, if the second season when this coming out. But like I'm glad to hear that there's some more stuff coming out in April for it because I'm super excited about that. 
So yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, did you guys want to talk about uh, the Smash yeah. segment? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna talk about Smash right here. Okay. Basically, it's been one month after Smash Ultimate came out. Uh, basically, uh, there's been a well, some interesting things going on with the game right there. One with uh, the tournament results for the game. Uh, other ones were uh, various like a level of, like tier list right there for the game, and then basically what people consider what actually it's what people consider being a viable character. Like if to have a, a certain move right there means that you're gonna be viable in high level play. Uh, basically, let's uh, talk about um, let's talk about Leffen's first month tier list real quick. What's is um, yeah, I'm just gonna link the image real quick. Just give me a second. Oh, c- can I share you guys a, th- a tweet that I saw very relevant to this? Sorry, Go for it, bro. Yep, so uh, the Max Ketchum, he's a, a tournament organizer and commentator and player for for Smash. Yes. He tweeted out the the characters that have won tournaments, and it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, we see a snake with MBD, Fox with Light, uh, Tweak won a tournament using Chrome, Donkey Kong, and Wario, Ken won a, a tournament using Sonic, Glutony in France won a tournament using Wario, MK Leo won a tournament using Ike, Boyd won a tournament using Pichu, a guy named Sakurai won a tournament using Wolf, and a Japanese player named YB won a tournament in Japan uh, using Dark Samus. Interesting. So it's interesting because, I don't know if you guys remember from the last TACs I was in, but um, I, I predicted Pichu and Fox to be really good characters, and... It ended up turning out that they won some of the first majors. Pichu won two of them, and uh, Fox won one. So that's an interesting pick. And um, but some characters I definitely did not see coming, like Ike and Wario. So that that's pretty crazy to see. Yeah, that's definitely crazy. I'm glad people are playing with the Dark Samus because I really like Dark Samus. Yes, interesting. I like both Samuses in general, but I mean, I definitely like Dark Samus more. Okay. Okay, now, definitely interesting. So let's go over the tier list and see what this uh, like, uh, results in right here for, um, you know, let's see if we can match anything right there with that. Basically, uh, this is Leffen's tier list right there that he tweeted out one month, like basically saying this is one month tier list. Basically, obviously, the characters we, like, we expect right there, obviously, Pete's right there, Pokemon Trader, Inklings, there's Paulina, Cloud. Uh, Pikachu and uh, Pichu, Yoshi, Wario, and DK is up there. Obviously, which is there. weird. Yeah, those are the randoms. You know, you know, those are no, they're, they're, it's actually not weird because Wario and Donkey Kong both have very strong combo games and mobility, and they have really safe pressure and really high damage. So they're just like a very all around characters. Imagine Ryu, but instead of throwing Hadoukens, he threw bricks at you. <laughs> Damn. Like, just, just very solid gameplay. And, for example, um, they both have, like, um, things that can really shift momentum very hard. For example, Wario has the the fart attack, where if he waits around a minute or so, it becomes fully charged and you get a KO with it. And in this game, Wario has several ways of comboing into that. So it's kind of similar to Jigglypuff's Rest. And um, Wario has very, very high combo power. And, and we see it because Tweak won a tournament in the U.S. with Wario. And Glutony won a tournament in Europe with Wario. So that's two majors for Wario. That, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's and Donkey impressive. Kong is just like a grappler on crack because he's just super safe and super hard to beat and li- lives a lot. But maybe people will figure out the matchup the more the game comes out. I think so, too. Yeah. I yeah. see Wario yeah. being a stronger character this this time around. Yeah, De- definitely that. Um, other things, let, let me take a look. Other things that I see right there, I see that he has King K. Rool as a low tier character with a lot of faults. Which, um, I think that might be he either really thinks that character is trash right there or he's just trolling with that. <laughs> 
And he also has Krom, like, way behind, well, not way behind, but, like, a little bit behind Roy, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure Krom is the better of the two. Just, like, I mean, I guess it's arg- I guess it's debatable since, um, you know, people like to say, like, Krom's up B is not that good, but, I mean, I still think he's, like, a little bit better than Roy in terms of racking up consistent damage. And not having to have like that weird like spacing gimmick like him like Roy and Marth, like I I don't understand why he put him behind Mar- uh, Roy, or maybe yeah, because of his up B in general. It's probably the the recovery side of things that he makes it like he probably figured out that there's combo, um, that there's more combo potential. Mm-hmm. But um, I feel that in the tier list, Krom is actually above Roy. It's just that Krom has more faults than Roy. Ah, okay, and, I see. Uh, I, that's actually kind of what Leffen is saying, I guess, now that I yeah, look at it yeah. more. The ones that really surprise me in this tier list are uh, Toon Link. I don't think he should be that low. I feel like Hugo uh, in Mexico is proving a really good point. He's won tournaments and... <laughs> and take given a very good fight to mk leo um so toon link is a character to watch out for right now that not many people are are looking out for um definitely duck hunt dog is underrated because he has very high damage potential and i still feel like he's really underrating captain falcon Um, really yeah captain falcon i feel like he's a very strong character it's just that we we need the right player to come along for him but he'll eventually show and i'm especially surprised with how high he has jigglypuff i thought that after using jigglypuff for a while she's definitely a dangerous character but she has some major flaws but she seems to be like above a a decent part of the cast so that's interesting to look at yeah, interesting. Uh, also, I'm looking at this today. I don't see Mr. Yeah, Game of Watts on here for some reason, unless I'm blind as a bat. You said you don't see yeah. who? You don't see Mr. Game of Watts. That's because they patched him out of the game when they changed his fare. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't see him either. It's like picking Iron Man in Marvel 3. You just don't want to win. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, no, that's Tyson Culp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Tyson Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I think we can all agree with the top tiers. Yeah, I definitely, definitely agree with that. Obviously, like the low tier characters, like, there's some low tier characters that, like, obviously, like King K. Rool, obviously, he said, like, King K. Rool obviously he does have, like, faults, like, yeah, because people can fight, fight around him right there. And that, but there's, like, obviously, other other characters that should be higher, like, like I don't know if. It's, it says, there's. Obviously, I don't know much about the Smash community like that, but I know like King K. Rose would not be fucking bottom tier. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead, go ahead. It, it, it's hard to say because he definitely has some exploitable things, but only time will really tell. Maybe he, le, le, we also need to forget that Leffen lives in Europe, and compared to, for example, Mexico or the United States. Europe has a smaller scene, so there's many matchups that Leffen has probably not fought. So that may ch- may or may not change his opinion of the tier list because sometimes some unknown matchups can actually, after you fight them, they change your mind. Um, true for that, example, true that. The, the, this last week there was a tournament, the first European major named Valhalla in Denmark. And... Um, mm-hmm. Glutony, the Wario player, won the tournament. He's the best player in France. And uh, it's interesting because Leffen was up 2-0 against Glutony in the tournament. And Glutony turned it around 3-2 and ended up winning the tournament afterwards. So definitely that's a matchup that that definitely caught Leffen off guard. and, And it's definitely a matchup to watch out for. But I feel like the same case that happened with Wario could also happen with many other characters. So it's it's still early to make a tier list, but the most consistent thing about his tier list is probably the top tiers. Yeah, definitely. And that's also another thing uh, when it comes to this game and just Smash in general. Uh, just because it's like so... Uh, 
you really have to be able to adapt. Like, I feel like this game gives a... Uh, well, get, if you played Smash before any other game, uh, it'll give you a really good understanding of, like, fundamentals and spacing and timing. And it'll also give you, like, uh, set you up to be able to read your opponent really well. Because I feel like, you know, even, like, a low-tier character in the right hands, and this game especially, uh, can be used really well... Uh, just in terms of like, uh, you know, placement of moves and spacing and reads, uh, that all comes into play when playing this game, which is why I like it a lot. Like that's why I like Smash a lot uh, because it actually is very, it's kind of really read heavy, and you have to kind of just like get into your opponent's mind. And so even when you do that, like I feel like you can definitely take a low tier character and take them all the way to the top. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's also things that haven't impacted the meta yet, but eventually will. Um, I'll give you two examples. Uh, the first one and most notorious one was MK Leo winning with Ike. Uh, he definitely showed that his neutral air was one of the best normals in the game, and people weren't really taking Ike into account after he yeah. bodied everybody with pretty much just neutral air. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, there is a, one of the best Smash 64 players in the world is from Mexico and his name is Jaime HR. He's won Genesis in doubles and many other things in that game. And he's also playing Smash 4, no, sorry, Smash Ultimate. And um, Jaime discovered a tech that it turns out that if you roll on the ground, your, your rolls start getting worse and worse the more you use them, right? Oh, really? Really? Yeah. But Jaime discovered a way to bypass this. And it turns out that if you jump and then instantly do a side air dodge, you get the same invincibility properties as the ground roll, but you get no deterioration. And nobody is doing it except Jaime and the people that have seen Jaime do it. So when the rest of the world catches on to that tech and they realize that you can get away with more rolls than you actually can in, with, with that tech... Um, there's going to be a change in the meta for sure because it enables better defensive play. And things like that that haven't been discovered by everyone yet, they definitely need to, uh, to start catching on and they will have a big impact in the game. It's like Marvel 2 before Wave Dashing got discovered and Marvel 2 after Wave Dashing got discovered. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Damn, so wait, so what exactly is he doing? So if you roll in the game too much, uh, try, it, try it, it out. If you roll too much, you start getting less and less invincibility and your rolls start becoming slower. Okay. But if you okay. jump and then instantly do a side air dodge in the air, uh huh, you do not deteriorate the invincibility you have. Huh, okay. So if you want to roll to the sides to avoid an attack, it's better to do the instant uh, jump uh, jump air dodge than a roll all the time because it enables better defensive play. Does he have clips on YouTube where he's doing this? Mm, no, but he, dev, he streams a lot, so I'll clip it the next time he does it. How about that? Yeah, for sure, man. I want to see that. Yeah, I'll, I can also record it for you guys if you guys want to see. But that he definitely made a big post about it in the in his local Smash community, and he's he, he's sponsored by the same team that sponsors me. So that's how I found out that he's actually doing that, and he's actually a very good player in this game. He's somebody to watch out for for future tournaments for sure. Damn, that's crazy, dude. Well, awesome. Damn, new tech alert. Tech yeah, alert. that's actually... I don't know if it's new tech for everyone because some people already know it, but it's definitely something I'm not seeing Americans, Europeans, and Japanese do, at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, damn, we're about to see that come up. Yeah, I mean, it's something really minor, but it's going to have an impact in the long run. It's not like game-breaking, but it's it's a good use. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, are you gonna book it up real quick, or no? Or or what? What's that? Oh, sorry. So, uh, you can bring. Uh, are you gonna bring up the tack real quick or not yet? A uh, wolf. 
Uh, yeah, I, I was about to, to try to find a clip, but if not, I'm, I'm going to try to record it uh, oh, either yeah. today or tomorrow. Okay, okay. Okay, so, um, obviously right there, um, so right now, um, it says, so at the moment right there with all the characters winning right there, do you think this is actually one of the most ballot smash games yet at all? Because there's so, there's been a lot of freaking characters that have been winning, like, so that means, it's not like, uh, Melee, where only, like, certain characters you had you seen winning right there besides certain character specialists in the game. But, you know, you don't see just Foxes or Falcos or um, Marps right there. Or, like, or, like, you know, the top tier characters actually like, just winning the event. You actually see, at the moment, right now, a big variety of characters actually winning. Like, obviously, there was a Snake that won. Obviously, we have Warrior won. And basically, all those characters won right there. So, do you think this, this, do you think Smash at the moment right there is a pretty balanced game right there? Or this game has not gotten... The aspiration yet, right? Did they actually find out the top, true top tier? Uh, I, think I think it's. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go. You you go ahead. I was gonna say uh, to say that it's balanced is. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's like t terribly underbalanced. Like I don't think that there's like a huge domination. Uh, with like as you can see, like in, even in Leffen's top tier list, there's like a lot of characters. Uh, on the top no. end of the tier list, um, a lot, and I mean a lot, man. So like it has a lot of variety, and obviously since somebody won with Dark Samus, like even like some characters in that low segment uh, have the potential. So I don't think it's uh, reached the point yet where it we can say that it's you know these characters are the only ones dominating, and. Um, you know, and then call it like, oh, these characters are super broken and unbalanced. I, I think it's fairly balanced for the amount of time that we've had it. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like, as new tech gets discovered, like, you know, that's obviously going to change. But uh, I don't think it's, like, unbalanced. Like, I think it's fair. That's the best way to put it. It's fair. Definitely. There's nothing like super broken so far that that makes every other character unplayable. Um, by the way, I shared the, the clip in the main chat room so you guys can see how he he does it, that tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, yeah, okay. I, I agree with you. It's, it's not gotten to a point where something is uh, is actually game breaking or or dumb. Uh, I feel like there's characters with certain advantages like Peach with her high damage combos or Ike with his really oppressive Nair. But outside of that, any character seems like they can compete. Yeah, for sure. I agree, I agree. Yeah, what do you think, Zerms? So, so, well, first I'm trying to pick up the pick up the pack real quick. Yeah, he does it. Let me show you in which second of the clip. Uh, I think I found it right there. Looks like it's like... Looks like it's like... Uh, 16 seconds in? No, it's like 13... 12 or 13 seconds in, right? Yeah, where he does the, the air dodge? Yeah. Yeah, that's where he does it. Yeah, what's I'm about like? to slow this down real fast. Okay, so let's... Slow it down real quick. Okay, so okay, yeah, okay. That's very that's very interesting tech. Very interesting tech. Yeah. Where is it exactly? If you go to like for like uh, twelve seconds I can, in, let me, let me try to clip a, another clip of him doing it. It's like twelve seconds in, in, in that clip. I'll find you another one. With Ganondorf's air dodge, is he, it's easier to see. Because he, he also... He plays uh, Captain Falcon, Ganondorf, and King K. Rool. And he's actually a very dangerous player. Yeah, I couldn't really catch it. I'm not really sure where he's doing it. 
Oh, it's it's at 12 seconds in. It's basically right after he gets hit right there, you see him like air dodge, like land, and then immediately air dodge that they recover. Then he hits um, him after hits the enemy afterwards. He basically he gets hit. He uh, like uh, like lands air dodges it, then hits him afterwards. And it's after uh, it's after like uh, he kills him, but the the enemy wants and when the enemy comes in. I'll try to get a cleaner clip of it. Okay. 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 But that's all I said later. Okay. So um, it definitely is gonna be a lot of tech to, to be discovered, everything like that. It's definitely gonna be interesting. Okay. Um, let's go on to the next one, which um is gonna be um Grand Blue versus Fighting. Uh, Grand Blue versus Fighting is a New fighting game by Arch System that got announced like last the begin the end of last year. That basically is a simple fighting game based on the Grand Blue anime series that uh, has been airing a while like airing like uh, last year. So that it's actually a pretty interesting thing because it's an anime fighter, but it has more traditional anime fighting techniques. Like uh, allowed to Street Fighter, where basically it's more like um. For what we know about it, it's more like a traditional fighter, where it's basically like footsie battle right there, not heavy, uh, not complex combos and everything like that, and basically simple things for for what we know. So um, this is the first time I'm hearing about this game actually. I'm about it, to it actually it sounds really interesting. It's the first time I hear about it as well, aside from the researching it. But every Arxis game is usually really solid, so it's gonna be definitely very interesting to to. Look oh, at. this this game, okay. Yeah, I saw some uh, footage of this game before. So yeah, this game it looks pretty interesting right now, because for what it looks like there, it for what people have been examining it right now, it's basically a simple free. A simple fighter that has, about, you know, we're basically simple, uh, simple combo swing into a special move with probably a combo in the super, something like that. Um, okay. And let's say there is going to be, it says, I would play the trailer, but obviously I don't want this video to get freaking, um, uh, like, uh, copyright claimed on it, so I, so, I, so I cannot <laughs> sell it. <laughs> It looks pretty cool. I'm watching the trailer right now, and I, I can honestly say, like, uh, I could I could see myself playing this, honestly. Yeah, it looks actually pretty interesting. There's a character called Charlina that actually looks interesting because she's like she's just very fucking short, and and basically yeah, I'm watching her right now. And she damn, looks, this game looks hype. Yeah, it looks definitely hype about that. Definitely, I'm definitely checking it. Like, look, look it out, and and obviously they're supposed to be building new characters in like, I think it was, it was like February or April, I think, that they're gonna reveal more characters. And they also did announce that. Um, oh, not, this character not, looks so cool. And they also did announce too that. Um, they're for getting characters what the game actually needs. I mean, like characters, like they're trying to like uh, have a variety of characters that will work with the cast, that will work well to cast instead of having a lot of like you know like like everyone's favorite characters in it. They're trying to have a big variety of characters to make the game well, like a variety of characters, you know, so that you don't have you know five, five, ten Ryu's in the game or ten Goku. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, what makes this a simple fighting game? Like I, you said that earlier. Like, what are they trying to do with this game exactly? Like, they're trying to make it a simple fighter. What does that mean? Well, basically, from what from what I remember right there, the over the overview right there, basically, is like a simple fighting game where basically um, there's no like really help like heavy inputs for one or no. Basically, there's no like command inputs for one or no. If basically if to get a special move, you have to just like Press shit about press, press like two buttons. Like, I think they get a special move come out. But this is from okay. one number. So ba so basically, it's like a very simple fighting. It's like very like very uh, entry level oh, fighting entry game level that people fighting. can play. play. So because so, they're, they're trying to, for one number, trying to uh, get the cast, 
like trying to people trying to get the people that play the mobile game into this game right there and try to have them so that they don't immediately freaking leave because it's too hard to freaking play which is like what the fuck <laughs> right right i feel like that's a, a that's an interesting move because sometimes simplifying games makes it so that newer players feel more welcome kind of like dbfc but yeah. it still creates a skill gap so it, it's it's interesting to see how it's gonna work out because uh removing the execution barrier is definitely very interesting yes uh but this is this is this is what all i know about it obviously uh, i had to i had to find more information about it just to make sure uh that's okay here we go this is Okay, I'm trying okay, to... So, the, when I think of a simple fighting game, I think of Samurai Showdown. Did anybody play that? Yeah, but that was hardcore. Everybody played it in Mexico, and they, they went hard at that. <laughs> and wasn't there just, like, a few, like, button inputs for that? Yeah, but it's still very hardcore. <laughs> I mean, I can see the, like, it be being hardcore as hell like that, but... That's what I think, like, you know, like, a very simple, like, button, like, inputs, and... Yeah, that's actually you know. a, a good example. Okay, there's uh, there's more info right there. There's going to be more characters announced in early March, and... Let me see. Okay, it says here in this article right here that there's... A, this game has a original story with beginner and veteran-friendly play gameplay. Okay, basically here. Okay, here's the article that I found real quick. So let me link it here, here, and I will probably just post it in the video here, so you can see. Well, for the people that are watching this. Okay, this is the article I found right here. Basically, it's saying that this game right here, though. Okay, basically, in order to avoid the possibilities of any beginners and those who don't want to play games as much, it won't be a combo-heavy game. You want those who play smoker games to enjoy it, so you will, you get to do all the smoker packs with one button. On the other hand, if it's being made with something with plenty of actions and depth, so the skill players can will also enjoy it. We're putting an art system's works know-how to set this up something good. The game's width is modest, and combos are simple as it gets. The game is saving up to be something that lets you do difficult, uh, lets you do difficult elements such as juggling and error combos in limited situations. You get to see more. You get to see abilities and trust like skills in the game. For example, Lancelot this is a blazing impulse as a spe his special attack, and he can use West Pharaoh that comes with a cutscene for a charge attack. Um, Grand's ability has different stages of attack increase. Gunner's light war has a super armor effect that can be used for counters. The other effects based on triple attacks, HP recovery, attribute up, and more. The characters that were announced first are more standard side, but later on we see more announcements if you with different kinds of characters. The team wants to add more characters via CLC, obviously. <laughs> Grand is a particular base on one from the anime. There aren't any jazz elements, so you find some that uh, we get to see them some crystal beasts as a Battle moves. A lot of focus can be on the story mode, but it's a original story for those who aren't familiar with the Grand Blue series. There are some elements that would make it more durable for who has played through the events from the original series. Since there are people who don't like the idea of winning or losing, the considering a way of playing could take care of that. So, so they're basically making it so that there's a mode where you don't like, like nothing will happen if you win or lose. So it's I don't know how they're going to implement that. They will have online versus support. We're planning for player matchmaking and rank matchmaking. We're thinking about releasing on Steam and arcade version is also in the consideration. Development is about 60 percent set, complete. Interesting. And the final models are pretty much done. And from here on, we get a series of increasing quality. So yeah, so that's basically that. Also, the reason why we Psy Games went with our system was because the Guilty Gear series and Blaze Blue series have a style that fit with the Grand Blue Fantasy. Because, you know, art style. So, yeah, that's basically... For sure. So, yeah, that's basically... Um, that's that right there. What is actually a pretty like, interesting take. I'm just wondering how they will uh, do the freaking high-level aspects of the game. Like, you know, basically, you know, by the high level, high level tech that, you know, pro players will actually do right there and love it with the freaking simple execution and everything like that for the game. So it could be that this game could be like a very, 
um, simple ass street fighting game where basically you rely on footsies or whatever thing like that. Or it could be something like a light version of Guilty Gear where it's rust down heavy, but not, but you can actually play the game <laughs> if you get hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it has that break and stuff. Yeah. Mm, that's, that, that's, that's an interesting game. I, I'm actually, I'm not really into anime fighters. Um, just because like, Blast Blue and like, um, uh, let's just see. I I tried Persona Arena and then I tried uh, what's it called? What's that one that just came out? Blast Blue Tag. Blast Blue Tag. There's also a uh, Kingdom Hearts Million right there that came out of Japan that hasn't came out here yet. They are releasing more fighting games. Then there's also um. Final Game EX that, that came out like last year. So, obviously, like that. But probably the biggest like ones right there is probably Tag Battle and obviously Dragon Ball Fighters for anime fighting games. I think for me personally, like those games, like those anime fighters, like aside from having like weird characters that I just like don't think are cool. Like in the Blast Blue series and then the Guilty Gear series, uh, I'm not. I'm also not a big uh, Dragon Ball Z guy, so I don't play Dragon Ball Z. But those games, they're kind of hard to like, like kind of focus. Like when you're looking on the screen, just because there's way too much like animations like happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And like, mean. and like those uh, those types of games, like with all those animations, like I feel like you can't really keep a good eye on where your character is on the screen because they don't really pop out at you. Because I, I feel like those like games, like your characters kind of just like blend into the background of because everything is like super 2D and like super anime-ish. But this one, this art style, like I feel like this one, you can really like look and see like your characters and like what they're doing on the screen. So... Uh, and on top of that, they're pleasant to look at. So I, I can honestly see myself like checking this out or downloading it once it comes out, just to give it a try. Yeah, same here. I definitely do think of that. I wonder. I'm still wondering like how the game will actually play as. Hopefully, when when they announce more characters, I thought they have like at least gameplay demonstrations to see how like people how the game will actually be played in neutral and everything. Obviously, it won't be high yeah. level or anything like that, but at least we we'll see what the game will actually play like against real people. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely an interesting concept, and from the sounding of the mechanics, it's probably going to be a really aggressive ga game. But it's all right since most uh, Arxis games are, are always super. It's going to be interesting to see how the the simplified mechanics. It might it's probably going to be a, a, a hype game to watch. Uh, yeah, I definitely could see myself checking it out. Yeah, so yeah, I definitely am definitely uh, interested in seeing this right there and seeing how it will actually play out and everyone will try it. Uh, so um, uh, let's go with a little bit of other pending game news. Um, right now, there looks like um, on the 27th or so, 26th, 27th of this month, is going to be most likely the announcement of probably the start of Season 2 for Dragon Ball Fighters. So we probably actually finally will see what they're gonna announce for Dragon Ball Fighters in the next for the next um, thing, hopefully the DLC does not cost thirty five dollars again. <laughs> Dear God. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, definitely was expensive as hell. But hopefully they actually get some uh, interesting characters for it. Right then hopefully they make they make some like uh, fan favorites coming out. But basically, um, it's been confirmed by uh, Arcs not like uh, Banco Nankai that they're good. There's gonna be an announcement. For the for those on the 26th or 27th, when um, the Dragon Ball like uh, battle of the ball, you know, basically the battle of no no it's not battle of stones, it's basically the world Dragon Ball tour right there, the final event right there that's gonna happen uh, at the end of this month. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited for that because I play Dragon Ball and you guys know that Dragon Ball is a really big thing over here in Mexico. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But I'm hoping to see some characters that are creative, you know, because most of the of the cast right now in DB feels kind of repetitive. Because of Goku? <laughs> some exceptions, of course, but it just feels like most characters do similar things. So I would enjoy like some, like maybe uh, Kid Goku 
who yeah. having the staff and the cloud to to move around yeah, or maybe yeah. yes character like Arale Chan robot shit and me yeah. I would enjoy characters of that type, but I en I understand that probably they're gonna do some plugins for Dragon Ball Super, have Jiren, the Broly movie, all that all that good stuff, you know. Probably gonna have like uh, alternate Goku more likely, but hopefully they add. I know people have been wanting Gotega because you know Gotega is a very hype character that people want. Obviously, people want like more female characters for it, so people want um, Kale and um calif and kefla yeah kefla yeah or like oh that fusing with that forgot the name of the fusing but you know that could be a possibility too um obviously people want to see like videl and or like maybe you know cyber uh the say uh great like a uh, cyberman great say a man say a man say a man and yeah uh, yeah or and people want to see like the best fucking hero of them all mr satan <laughs> oh shit is it, and also probably uh, um, uh, not not Kame Frick. Um, fuck, I forgot his name. Fucking Master Roshi. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I took. Five Yo, minutes. Master Roshi. Damn, that would be sick, man. I'm surprised they didn't put his ass in. Or they definitely need to put his him in. Like, yeah, he's probably gonna be the the first announcement. Gonna be the, him becoming the buff version of himself. That's probably gonna be pretty hype. Or says, or he has Some... a pull, or he has a pull up super that allows him to freaking get his bulk, but then then after he does it right there, he becomes weak. <laughs> yeah. So I would but... like to see and definitely some some more some wacky characters, you know, because Dragon Ball has a lot of potential for for different playstyles because of how the villains work. Like I really did what they did with the Gin. I really. With the Ginyu Force, for example. Yeah, making so that so, uh, he can call each Ginyu Force in certain orders, so and it has like different properties of what he has to do, which is actually definitely an interesting thing. Yeah, I would like to see more of those characters and less like characters who are just like rushed on all the time. You you don't really enjoy it because it it just feels so repetitive, you know. Yep. Don't worry. So it's, I think it's just that think could be that possibility right there, like just because they will, because of they will probably have turtles in there, just because like, what the fuck? Why are turtles? We don't need a fucking another Goku clone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, or if, yeah, but basically, I think the only Goku that people would actually care for. Well, I think there's actually a couple Gokus. I know they probably will be okay with freaking Super Saiyan Four Goku. And also in Seek Goku, I know those those are probably the only like Goku forms that people would probably be okay with coming in the game. Yeah, or like Goji. Yeah, you know, like, you know, like just you know, go like oh, with the person that has Goku with that name. Yeah, I feel like Kid Goku would actually be the coolest out of all of those because he could play very differently from the others. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. Good Kid Goku is actually pretty good too. I definitely, yeah, I definitely am going to be like hyped for that. But not. But not Kid Goku from like uh, GT. Kid Goku from the Vanilla series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> GT is forgotten in my mind. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing that I actually like, like right there from GT is like Pan. Pan. That's oh, yeah. Pan and, and Super Seventeen. Super Seventeen is dope. <laughs> Super Seventeen and and also like um like Baby Vegeta in some watts, but not fucking Baby. Fuck Baby. <laughs> Dude, how many more characters do you think they could even add? I don't even know characters in the series anymore. Sorry, Past like the like, prime. That's just one they could this. add uh, Evil Piccolo. They could add uh, Gohan from the future. They, they could add, add Mazen, Kid Goku. Vegeta. Fuck yes, Marazin Vegeta. Yeah. Dabura is also another one. They could have Jambalaya. Oh um, uh, yeah, Janemba. <laughs> Uh, who else? They could have like uh. They have super. How about Android Android thirteen? Android thirteen. The, yeah. the old guy, the old yeah. Android. Oh, no, that's Android, that's Doctor no, Garrow. No, no, like Android thirteen right there is the trucker guy from like if you actually watch the Dragon Ball Super at all. I mean the Dragon Ball Bridge right there. There's a movie right there. And he's he's like, oh my trucker hat. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> and basically, I, I, I don't, I would, wouldn't mind right there, if, like, seeing, seeing that. Let's see, so, obviously there's, like, more characters for it right there, but we will figure out what they are in, but near the end of the month. So, um, let's see. The only other news right there that I know of right now is basically there's a new balance patch for, like, a Street Fighter V for the new character, Cades. It looks like interesting with the changes that they have on it, and they actually buffed some very freaking like interesting characters, and they just fucking made can commit suicide. <laughs> yeah, that's annoying. That's why I don't. And yeah. the, Street Fighter Five's like balance patches are just like, what are these people thinking, dude? Like, they just like buff all the wrong characters and nerf all the wrong characters, and then they take yeah. characters that like people want to actually play as, and they just like. You know, like stomp on them, spit on them, and then they throw them in the trash, and then they pick them out of the, of the trash, and then they just hand them to you. Like, here you go. Like, for like Ken, for example. Like, why, dude? Why? Why'd yeah, you well, do that? Well, basically, don't forget about season three where the freaking uh, freaking Alex players committed like uh, like killed themselves, and then season four happened, and then they resurrected like freaking Gil, and fucking like I uh, like became the new fucking uh, like a uh, like rule of the world because like I know fucking like uh Alex players had so many fucking got gotten so many good buffs. Also Yeah, Gif, yeah. And also Zang Geef is now playable yeah. again. <laughs> like the fact that they're like making so many like patches to this game and I'm honestly shocked that they added a new character. Like okay. just, I, I'm honestly shocked. Like so does that mean that they're gonna keep investing time and energy into this game that's like how many years old is it already? It's been like what five years, six so, years. Because remember, they invested so many times for drag for Dragon Ball. Oh, not Dragon Ball. Uh, like Street Fighter Four. They invested so many times. They did this for every freaking fighting game that they made right there because you know they want to keep support. So because like, you know how many versions that Street Fighter Two got? There's been so many versions, and then there's three versions of like uh, Third Strike. There's three versions of the Alpha series. There's freaking uh, yeah. There's, there's Street like, Fighter like, Alpha is my favorite, or Street Fighter Three Alpha. It's like one of my favorites. Yeah, so there's been. It makes sense that they that they want to keep games alive because you know, like it makes people want to play games more. I like that unless they like are very hyped for the games, like you know, like the like the community, which is like the Marvel community and everything like that. People really freaking like what like seeing it, and basically Marvel and um, Street Fighter is keeping the game alive because you know it's their baby, and they want to keep it alive. Yeah, I mean, what characters and like stuff do you guys want to see? Makoto. Like Ken is one. Uh, I want to see Yang come back. Uh, who else do I want to see? Oh, well, if you actually say. <laughs> people like we, fucking no, Honda. Honda, dude. We need T Hawk and DJ back. T Hawk, yeah, I can see T Hawk. Um, yeah, yeah I definitely want to play as Yang, man. And Honda too, but everybody hates Honda. <laughs> nah, Honda, nah, screw Honda. It's people want to see uh, Makoto right now, but Makoto's a big thing. People will, like want to probably see Ego or Saddam. Um, Sodom, so not Sodom. Sodom, um, people probably want to see, uh, people want to probably see characters that they haven't seen much before, or like, um, people probably want to, I think people want to actually see more, uh, uh, DiCaprio, because I think DiCaprio was a very interesting addition for it. People probably want to see, yeah, more. um, let's see, there's probably been a freaking ton of characters for it okay. right now. <laughs> There's been a lot of freaking characters that people want to see for it. I'm not 100 percent sure like what the list, what's this is for for it, but I know Makoto is a very, is like one of the hypest characters that people want. Maybe uh like Rose or something or C oh, Viper. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rose and C Viper. Like actually, C or Viper Rose. was rumored to actually be one of the DLC characters. You said what? She was rumored to be in. Uh... Yeah, she was basically. Uh, she was supposed to be rumored to be one of the like a C, uh, one of the season four DLC characters by C Vapper. Hmm. Okay. 
And yeah, and also, yeah. this, I also I remember seeing a leak like that that Dan was supposed to want to be one of the characters. Then Kays got revealed, and then people like saw like like basically like Kays had some of the same novels as Dan, like the same like type of things that so basically maybe that leak has some truth to it. I don't know. Damn. Let me see. I'm trying to. Who's another great character from Street Fighter that I want to see, man? I don't know. There's so many, dude. There's so many characters like I can't even like remember how. But I think Kage was a cool addition to the game. Like, I mean, it's technically evil Ryu, right? Yeah. It's- uh, Oni to Evil Ryu. Like a what if. Mm, okay. Yeah, I like the way he plays, too. Like, he's got that, like, that that uh, air teleport or something. Like, you know how Akuma can, like, do that teleport? He's got, like, an air teleport, and he has, like, a really cool, like... He, his Tatsu is different. I think that's pretty cool, man. Like, I overall, I like Kage as a character. Yeah. I think he's yeah. pretty damn cool. Mm-hmm. He's pretty cool. But I'm just shocked that like they put him they put a new character in the game. Like what else are like and then the balance patch, like what else is like when when are we gonna hear more for from Street Fighter? Well, we will find out soon enough because obviously it's it's very uh hard to actually do it like that because obviously they did announce a season pass for it for the for Street Fighter Five at all, so we don't know what they're planning on doing for the game or not. So we have to just wait and see what they're gonna do for it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah that's, that's cool. Yeah, that's really that's really it for one now. For well, I think that's where we should leave off for, for that for tonight because. There's really, like, we talked about all the good things, like the Marvel vs. Captain Fall rumors, the freaking two tournaments that happened where two very classic games went out. We talked about Smash All the Way. We talked about a uh, awesome anime for uh, fighting game fans, and then other, some other news, too. Yeah, so um, I, yeah. Think, I think it was a good time to, like, uh, like close up stop. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, guys, for uh, checking out the next episode of Team Aria Combos. Yeah. We're going to like see you next time and have a good night. But first, before we go, I am flying high. We, then we have T, uh, TX7. Oh, uh, yeah, TX Sven. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure getting to hang out with uh, Flying High and TA Wolf and Jacob Man. Uh, thanks for let, hearing me talk about High Score Girl. Go check it out. It's really awesome. If you're a fighting game fan, you're going to love it. So. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me. Yep, and then we have T.A. And Wolf. Sorry. Thank, thanks for having me, guys. It was really an honor to to come back, and I was really glad to talk about all the stuff and, and share some some experiences and opinions with you guys. And, uh, yeah, make sure to check out High School Girl, check out those tournaments we talked about, and follow all of us on social media so you can keep up to date with, Definitely. with future projects. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Oh yeah, uh, we also have a Jacob man, but his he lost his voice a bit because he's sick. But he uh, says good night also, guys. See you later. Have a nice night. All right, awesome. See you guys.